sufficiently huge, whether or not they are on paper, the federal government is kind of the insurer of last resort. I think the government ends up as like the insurer of last resort, but I don't, I think I mean that in a different way than you mean that. It's also true when we go through these investment cycles, uh, you know, there are moments we overshoot actively at what all the companies are doing. Uh, you know, we have well over a trillion dollars of investment. We can look back at the internet right now. There was clearly a lot of uh, uh, excess investment. The AI world just shifted dramatically, and most people haven't realized it yet. A leaked memo from Sam Altman reveals something that should make every tech investor nervous. OpenAI might be losing the AI race. But here's where it gets really interesting. They're not losing to who you'd expect. Google just did something nobody saw coming. After years of playing catch-up, they've suddenly unleashed a series of AI products that are making even the biggest OpenAI supporters switch sides. We're talking about billionaire CEOs who've used ChatGPT every single day for three years, suddenly declaring they're never going back. That's not normal. That's a seismic shift. Let me break down what's really happening here because the surface story everyone's talking about barely scratches what's actually going on beneath. Sam Altman's internal memo, which recently surfaced through industry insiders, paints a picture that should worry anyone betting on OpenAI's continued dominance. He's openly admitting they're facing what he calls temporary economic headwinds. But when you dig deeper, these headwinds look more like a hurricane. The catalyst for all this chaos? Google's Gemini 3. Now, benchmarks are one thing, but what's happening in the real world is completely different. Users are reporting results that are frankly stunning. We're not talking about marginal improvements here. We're talking about leaps in capability that are making people completely rethink which AI tools they use daily. But Gemini is just the tip of the iceberg. Google has quietly assembled an entire arsenal of AI products that work together in ways OpenAI simply can't match right now. From Notebook LM to their latest visual reasoning models, Google's ecosystem is becoming increasingly hard to ignore. And here's the kicker. They're doing all this while barely breaking a sweat financially. The numbers tell a brutal story. OpenAI is projected to burn through $115 billion by 2029. That's billion with a B. Every model they train, every GPU they rent, every researcher they hire, it all adds up to a business model that hemorrhages cash by design. Meanwhile, Google is sitting on $70 billion in free cash flow per year. They have their own TPUs, making their training costs dramatically lower. They have existing data center infrastructure that would cost OpenAI tens of billions to replicate. Think about what this means strategically. Google could theoretically offer their AI models at a loss for the next decade without even impacting their bottom line significantly. They could, if they wanted to, price OpenAI completely out of the market. That's the kind of asymmetric warfare that keeps startup founders awake at night. But the real shock isn't just coming from Google. Anthropic, a company founded by former OpenAI employees just four years ago, is now generating more revenue than OpenAI from API sales to developers and businesses. Let that sink in. Sufficiently huge, whether or not they are on paper, the federal government is kind of the insurer of last resort. I think the government ends up as like the insurer of last resort, but I don't, I think I mean that in a different way than you mean that. They're coming to the point in their maturity where we are clearly seeing together huge enterprise demand. Really the time for, I think in 2026, 2027, we'll see a huge transformation of how enterprises think about this. A younger company with less brand recognition is beating OpenAI at their own game in the enterprise market. The shift in developer preferences tells us everything we need to know about where the market is heading. If you're coding today, chances are you're using Claude models, not GPT. It's become almost industry standard among software developers. This wasn't predictable even a year ago. Claude's early version showed promise, but nobody expected them to capture this much market share this quickly. What makes this particularly painful for OpenAI is that they had every advantage. They had the first mover advantage, the brand recognition, the partnerships. ChatGPT became a household name. Yet somehow they're watching their market share erode month by month. The latest traffic data shows OpenAI's share of generative AI traffic declining steadily. They still hold around 70%, but the trend line is unmistakable and concerning.
Sam Altman's response to all this is revealing. In his memo, he talks about making very ambitious bets technologically, even if it means falling behind temporarily. The focus, he says, needs to remain on achieving superintelligence. It's a bold strategy, essentially admitting they might lose battles today to win the war tomorrow. The specific areas OpenAI is betting on are fascinating. They're working on using AI to generate training data for other AI systems, creating a kind of recursive improvement loop. They're also developing something codenamed Shallot Pete, though details remain scarce. The emphasis seems to be on automated AI research, essentially building AI systems that can improve themselves. But here's where the strategy gets risky. While OpenAI is focused on these moonshot projects, Google is winning the hearts and minds of users today. Mark Benioff, the billionaire CEO of one of the world's largest AI-integrated software companies, recently tweeted something that sent shockwaves through the industry. After using ChatGPT daily for three years, he spent two hours with Gemini 3 and declared he's not going back. He called the leap insane and said it feels like the world just changed again. When someone of Benioff's stature and experience makes a statement like that, it's not hype. This is someone who's been deeply embedded in the AI revolution from the beginning, someone whose company depends on choosing the right AI partners. His defection is symbolic of a larger shift happening across the industry. New high this morning, every day seemingly. Co-founder Larry Page, now the world's second richest person. He just passed Larry Ellis. With no offense to Benioff, he is great at selling a story, but does have a history of showing up late and very loudly. Remember, Salesforce's first AI brandings, they were around language like Copilot and Einstein. Only after agents have his praise guys for Gemini might not be the early adopter signal that Wall Street thinks it is inside the AI ecosystem rivals for decades. And Google's win could be Oracle's loss given its ties to open AI. The advantages Google is demonstrating aren't just in raw reasoning power. Users are reporting superior performance in image generation, video understanding, processing speed, and multimodal reasoning. Google's visual AI capabilities are so advanced that some are calling it visual AGI. These aren't incremental improvements. They're generational leaps that make previous models look primitive by comparison. Of course, Gemini isn't perfect. Users report frustrating issues with instruction following, where the model sometimes does bizarre things despite clear prompts. It's a reminder that even the most advanced AI systems still have fundamental flaws. But here's the thing. These are solvable problems, and when Google solves them, their lead could become insurmountable. The financial dynamics make this competition even more lopsided. OpenAI needs to charge aggressively for ChatGPT subscriptions and API usage just to stay afloat. Every model needs to generate enough revenue to fund the development of the next one. It's a precarious position that forces them to make decisions based on financial necessity rather than strategic advantage. Google, on the other hand, can afford to play the long game. They can offer models for free or at extremely low prices undercutting OpenAI while barely impacting their profits. It's also true when we go through these investment cycles, uh, you know, there are moments we overshoot to really add what all the companies are doing. Uh, you know, we have well over a trillion dollars of investment. We can look back at the internet right now. There was clearly a lot of uh, uh, excess investment. They can invest in research that might not pay off for years without worrying about runway. They can take risks that a cash-burning startup simply can't afford. The investor community is starting to notice. The narrative around OpenAI is shifting from inevitable winner to risky bet. The burn rate, the competition, the narrowing technical lead, it all adds up to a company that might not be the sure thing everyone assumed it was. But here's where it gets really interesting. OpenAI's focus on superintelligence might actually be their only viable strategy. If they can achieve a breakthrough that leads to artificial general intelligence or beyond, all the current competitive dynamics become irrelevant. It's a massive gamble, essentially betting the company on achieving something that might be impossible or might be decades away. The next few months will be crucial. OpenAI needs to demonstrate that their ambitious bets are paying off 
that their focus on long-term breakthroughs isn't leaving them vulnerable to being overtaken in the present. They need to show investors and users that despite the current challenges, they're still the company best positioned to define the future of AI. Meanwhile, Google continues to execute relentlessly. Each new model release, each improvement to their ecosystem, each developer who switches from GPT to Gemini, it all adds up to momentum that's increasingly hard to stop. They're not just competing on technology, they're competing on economics, ecosystem, and sheer staying power. The irony is palpable. OpenAI, the company that started this revolution, the company that made AI mainstream with ChatGPT, might end up being overtaken by the very giant they awakened. It's a classic David versus Goliath story, except David is running out of stones, and Goliath just found a rocket launcher. What we're witnessing might be the beginning of a fundamental shift in the AI landscape. The era of scrappy startups leading the charge might be ending, replaced by a reality where only companies with massive resources can compete at the frontier. It's not just about having smart researchers anymore. It's about having the infrastructure, the data, the compute, and the financial runway to sustain years of losses while pushing the boundaries of what's possible. For users and developers, this competition is fantastic. We're getting better models, more choices, and rapid innovation as these companies fight for dominance. But for OpenAI, the path forward looks increasingly narrow. They need to thread the needle between maintaining relevance today and achieving breakthroughs tomorrow, all while burning through cash at an unprecedented rate. The memo from Sam Altman suggests he understands the gravity of the situation. The admission of rough vibes ahead is surprisingly candid for a CEO. But perhaps that honesty is exactly what OpenAI needs right now. A clear-eyed assessment of the challenges ahead and a willingness to make hard choices about where to focus their limited resources. As we watch this drama unfold, one thing is certain. The AI race is far from over. Google may be surging ahead, but OpenAI isn't out of the fight yet. Their bet on superintelligence might seem desperate, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And in the world of AI, a single breakthrough can change everything overnight. The next chapter of this story will be written by whoever can best balance immediate market needs with long-term technological ambition. It's a balance that's proved elusive for many companies throughout history. Whether OpenAI can pull it off remains to be seen, but one thing's for sure, the stakes have never been higher and the competition has never been fiercer. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.